Yeah, good morning, everybody. So I'm re representing the European Calculator uh, Consortium here. So, and uh, I will also talk about model advantages and disadvantages and transparency. So this goes all in the same direction. And by the way, the InnoPass project is also one of our sister projects. The other one is uh, the reInvent project. And um, I have a little bit of different opinion as a previous speaker. So I'm not an economist, so this is what I have to say, but I'm a physicist. So, and I come mainly from the physical side of, of the modeling. And um, as I know, uh, so the more complex models becoming, the more difficult they are to analyze. Because if you have non-linearities, for example, then you can create chaos and all these things. And this is also one reason why models are often blamed, uh, because, because the, the full region of, of the anal analytical processes which are needed in order to evaluate them can only be done partly. Uh, for these very, very complex models. This holds, by the way, not only for macroeconomics uh, models or for economics uh, models in, uh, in general, it holds also for the climate models, by the way. And you absolutely right what you have been said. Uh, the community was blamed, and that led to the fact that all these models have been opened, uh, made available. So the structure of the models, of course, is different. But the, from the physical point of view, the mechanisms are more or less similar. Okay, so allow me a few words why we need to go further uh, down, down in the scale, because this is absolutely important, because we want to foster the energy union uh, and the, okay, <laughs> we want to foster uh, the deep transformation in the, in the European Union, and um, in order to make clear the yeah, the urgency, I have uh, three slides only, which are dealing with the climate problem. What we see here is a remarkable linearity between the global warming and the emissions. Yeah? So if you look on the targets, we have been defined. So the two degree, uh, degree target and the... Uh, ah, okay. okay, thank you. Um, and the um, uh, 1.5 degree target, you see... you see that we have only a limited time yeah, uh, for, for achieving these goals. Yeah? So if you look on it, so we have a time until 2050, yeah? not more. So, um, and I'm really not sure whether this time is sufficient in order to make a deep transformation in all parts of our societies. Yeah? Here I have really doubts, and therefore we have to convince people. We have to take them from their, from, from their points of view and bring them into the future. And this was one motivation of the, of the global calculator model, uh, which I will discuss in detail. So I will also explain you a little bit about cities. What you see here is uh, an application of the so-called Kaya identity to cities. Yeah? And here, namely, to, uh, particularly to cities in the OECD and in the developing world. And you see uh, uh, quotients here, um, so CO2 per population, for instance. If you look on all cities, it is one, so that means it is a linear relationship. If you look in the OECD, and this is a good news, we, we, are, we are going down. So we have 0 0.87. Yeah? But in terms of GDP per population, we have also approximately one. That means um, <clears throat> if the population is increasing, parallel also the emissions are increasing, here we can become, of course, much better, or we can get much better here. Looking, we in, uh, if we are looking in the developing worlds, we see that we are increasing in terms of CO2, while the energy per GDP is going down here. So that means in the developing world, in the cities, we have a strong potential for leapfrogging still. Uh, but that's not all. So we have to focus also on the individuals. What you see here is... Uh, a representation how our lifestyle interferes with carbon di uh, dioxide emissions. So, and in particular to our nourishment, this is related to our nourishment styles. So, globally, we have 20% more food than necessary. So, we have good reasons to say that this food is wasted away. And how much emissions this creates from the agricultural sector alone, you see here on these slides. 20% and this 
is around 12 to 13, 14 percent of the total emissions of, from the agricultural sector. So this we have to make clear to the people. Okay, so what is now the European calculator? So it was inspired by the work we did in the past years um, for the global calculator approach. The uh, global calculator is a model which was financed by UK Department of Energy and Climate Change and the Climate Kick. It's a nice scientific exercise because we are aware of the fact of these integrated assessment models and we took a step, ba uh, step back in order to restart a little bit, to make things more simple. And I don't have the opinion that simple models cannot explain things in a sufficient scientific rigor. So it depends how you implement it and how you base or how you make your assumptions. So, um, and another point uh, which uh, was also a forcing factor in our group is the market. Yeah? So because the market demands more transparent models or models which are understandable. So you see here the European Calculator Consortium. As I said, it started from the, from the global calculator model and it is focusing on trade-offs and synergies uh, of sector-based decisions. Um, and in the, global cal in the European calculator model, we will downscale the global calculator model now further to the EU 28 plus 1. The plus 1 is Switzerland, because Switzerland is uh, with us in the consortium. In comparison, or in the opposite to existing integrated assessment models, which are based on a fully dynamics in most of the cases, we start from a different point of view. We are using clearly expert guess, yeah, in terms of desirable futures. So these experts are defining scenarios how the future will develop, and this is done for, for a series of sectors. So this was one uh, approach, and then, of course, we are using also literature in order to define these scenarios. And then we try to figure out, if you make a decision in a particular sector, how this interferes with the emissions from the sector. The underlying energy model is a simple supply and demand model. So, and what we also will do for, in comparison to the global calculator, we will, of course, extend the model world considerably and uh, it is our aim also to underpin the two, uh, European 2050 roadmap. And what comes also with this uh, project at the end is a Pathways Explorer, an e-learning platform, and a massive open online course. This is what I will skip. So we decided to use uh, an intermediate complexity approach or a stylized fact approach. So we are not always using as are not always implementing the full dynamics, this is what I have said. So the model is based on a supply and demand unit, um, um, such as uh, yeah, core for different sectors, so for land, cast, power plants, whatever. The user here decides which technologies um, could be applied. It's a mix of statistical approaches and dynamical approaches. In the moment, we not have done, or we have not implement, implemented, um, uh, let's say, optimization. Uh, or we have partly in, in implemented optimization uh, algorithms, but um, they are not economics-based assumptions uh, included about people's behavior. This will change in the future. Uh, and we have only limited feedback. So we consider only the necessary feedbacks. Yeah? Because if you have too much feedbacks, the, the point comes up again. So how to analyze all these different mechanisms? If you have modules which are interfering in a strange way, you can create chaos and whatever. So, and we will include uh, also a series of further modules. So how a, model, a module look like, you might, might see here. So this is for land, water, and biodiversity. Uh, we have a different input variables, we have conversion efficiencies, and then we have an output. What is still missing here is uh, are the feedbacks. So this is what we have still to do. So the project just started six months ago. No, the other way around. So the positioning of the calculators, I have to say that we don't have only one calculator, so we have the global one. 
uh, which was originally devoted, of course, to stakeholders, companies particularly. Um, but we have also a series now of uh, national uh, calculators. You see them here, where they are located in, in comparison to, to, the, to the other existing models. And um, important, a very important um, yeah, component of the, of the European calculator model are user surveys or expert meetings. Yeah? So because we need these experts, because they have the understanding of the system and therefore we, have, we are organized a series of different workshops. This is also what we did during the Global Calculator work, and we were very, very successful with it. You see here some of the surveys we did worldwide. Um, so we have included, and we will include, a large number of experts, and we will have many workshops, yeah, just in order to create an evidence for the, for, for the model. So how is, does it look like? Um, so the main ingredient are so so-called sectorial guardrails yeah so we have we call also, also call them levers in the moment we have 40 levers in sectors like lifestyles technology and fuels land and food demographics and then we have also sub levers as indicated here by the by the yellow bars so you can make lever selection you see it here for the example of diets um, <coughs> we have three of these sublevers, uh, calories consumed, quantity of meat, type of meat, yeah, and uh, of course we have four settings, so uh, level one is a minimal abatement, it's not business as usual, it's, a, yeah, it's based on, on statistical analysis, yeah, then we have ambitious uh, abatement, very ambitious abatement and extremely ambitious abatement. Um, so, and uh, yeah, so you see, for example, the level four for the quality of meat, and in a couple of minutes I will show you what kind of effect this has. So, here you see the example of the ambition levels for meat consumption, and you see also some... some uh, so, everything is documented very well in the platform, because, uh, yeah, it could be that the user likes to know from where these numbers come from. Yeah? For instance, for meat consumption, um, we, uh, we considered the WHO uh, um, uh, proposal for, for a healthy diet, for, it, for example. Yeah? So this is included. So that means everything is well based on, on, on literature and expert gases, of course. So and then we have a web interface. Here you can select pathways here by the drop uh, pull down menu, for example. So you can select different of these pathways and you see immediately how this relates to the carbon emissions and in this case how it relates to the 2 degree centigrade target. You can also, um, by the lever settings, you can also define your own pathways. Yeah? So that means if you would switch the levers, this uh, yeah, gray bar will change. And then you, can s then you can imagine, and if you do it for several levers, you clearly see how much this interrelates, uh, or how, how much trade-off this uh, creates, and how much synergies this probably would create. So other interfaces are related to the oil resources, open acidification, diets, I showed you already, land use, and then we have also a cost module which will be also extended further, because in the moment we can only say something about the relation of the selected pathway in terms of a counterfactual pathway, yeah, and how this, um, yeah, or which kind of effect this might have, you see here. So if you trade with, with yourself for lunch. Um, so in the moment, we have selected the, su the six degree scenario here. Yeah, so and this will cause, I don't know, uh, how much emissions, several thousand tons, gigatons. So and here you'll see the lever settings, which are valid for the, for the selection in the moment. If you change this now, this would have immediately this effect here. So the temperature can go down because the emissions are going down. And you see here how important it is uh, when people decide to live more sustainable. So for instance, don't consume so much meat, uh, don't eat uh, food which is produced, I don't know, elsewhere in, in, in Australia or it needs to be and then it's transported to here so everything yeah so because the transport sector is also considered here 
So these were examples for the global calculator web front end. We will decompose this now and will develop a version for the European Union with the resolution of the 28 member states plus Switzerland. And I guess we have, of course, we have to solve a lot of things and to solve also a lot of problems, but uh, we are, yeah, uh, we think that this could be a quite successful exercise because as the global calculator was released, we got more than 1,000 press releases or press responses. Yeah? You can play around with the global calculator. You see the web address here. Uh, you see also the website of the European calculator, uh, but there you will not find so much at the moment. Um, the most difficult problems to solve has to have to do with the resolution, so the European re so the re with the resolution or the downscaling to the 28 countries. So if we just take out two countries, so for example Poland and Austria, and want to relate them to each other, yeah, of course the question is how are they related? What does it mean in terms of the relation to the rest of the Union? And what does it imply in terms of the rest of the, of the globe, for example? Yeah? So these are open questions. We hope that we can solve it, so for example, by, by the application of transfer mat matrices. Okay, so far, I will stop here. This gave you a very, very brief overview of what we are doing in the European Calculator project. It is really a tremendous endeavor, I can tell you. And I hope that we will be successful at the end. And now I'm open for comments and questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And again, thank you very much for uh, sticking to the, the, the difficult uh, time limit. So let's uh, pick up two or three questions, if we may. So we have number one. Um, we'll start with you. So Anton Levesque from uh, PIC as well. Um, I have a question. So thank you for this tool first, which I think allows quite nicely to uh, assess what matters and what not for the climate. I had a question concerning the, the stakeholders. Um, because in another project in Nopas, I had the impression it was difficult sometimes to get some fruitful um, results from, from the interaction with stakeholders because they might have a very narrow view on their the topic. Um, how did you succeed and where did you fail? What are your what what would you, would be your recipe for a successful um, yeah connection with stakeholders? Okay, shall I answer directly? Yes. Oh, okay, so we have two groups of stakeholders, so this is important to say. The first uh, stakeholders are more rooted in the policy arena, yeah? and the second group of stakeholders are experts in the different sectors. Yeah? So, and if we organize the workshops with the sector experts, of course we have concrete questions. Yeah? We ask them something, yeah? and, and uh, so that means in other words we have a schedule and particular topics, and if we do it in such a way, the output is very useful because this is actually what we need for the European calculator. If you would invite stakeholders from, from, from everywhere and from every sector, so to say, then of course you can, can also get a lot of different opinions and sometimes you may get lost in all these different answers. So uh, this is more or less a, a pledge for organizing structured workshop and clear workshop in terms of the of the of the answers you like to achieve. If you don't do that, it is a very, very complicated uh, procedure at the end, yeah? and you would have difficulties to achieve that, what you probably like to see. Other questions? Otherwise, I, I want to abuse my position as chair again, because I think this is incredibly useful, in particular the uh, outreach with experts in different fields. And one of the key features of the UK climate calculator was that information being made available, which could be used to calibrate other studies, for example, the extent of smart grids and so on. Will that information be made available and so other modeling teams may be able to access it and use it? Yeah, yeah so this, uh, sorry, that I, I guess I forgot it, or maybe that I deleted it from the slide. I had it on one of the slides. So we have a strict open source, and open data philosophy. So all the things, also the source code of the model, will be made available to the public. Very good. Thank you very much. It's just a, another round, round of applause and thank you for, for keeping to the time.